Hi guys, my name is Ryan Wyatt for High Point Music's online video tutorials. So what we're going to cover in today's lesson is this is in response to an email from a viewer, Sam, who sent us in an email asking her to do a little bit of a breakdown on some Ed Sheeran tunes to get similar feels into his song. So he's a singer-songwriter who's looking to get a few extra tips or techniques in the ways he can create the same sort of feels to Ed Sheeran in the tune I See Fire. So what we're going to do in today's lesson, guys, is I'm going to go through it. I've done a bit of an analysis. I've come up with some cool ideas and some cool techniques. There's a rhythmic displacement idea that I found in this song that's not only used in IC5, but Ed Sheeran actually uses this one in his other massive hit, uh, Thinking Out Loud, which was the other song found this one. So it's obviously a staple go-to for his ballads to create those sorts of feels that he's looking for there. So we're going to go through, do the analysis that we were just talking about, and then I'm going to give you guys a really awesome little exercise so you can start implementing the same ideas, not only as a theoretical concept, but also being able to play it and execute that with really good feel on the instrument. So without further delay, guys, let's jump straight into today's lesson. Alright cool, so there's a bit of a taster for IC5 just so you guys can get an idea of the feel if you happen to be living under a rock and haven't heard this song before. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an excerpt from the verse, I think this illustrates the rhythmic idea perfectly. So we're going to go through, I'm going to show you guys what's going on nice and slowly. So let's jump on the fretboard. Okay guys, so the four chords we're going to use for this one are E minor, G major, D major and then C major cool so this is an idea where Ed Sheeran it's a two bar rhythmic figure so what he does is he's actually displacing some of the chord accents from the beginning of the bar and then moving them to the last beat of certain bars to create that real feel of syncopation so this is really, really effective for adding that bit of groove, particularly to a slower song. So let's jump in on the fretboard, guys. I'm going to show you how this works with the actual four bars of the verse, so you can see exactly where the accents have been moved to to create this exact feel. All right, so what we've got, we've got a 4-4 four, four chord progression, right? So four bars, E minor, G major, D major, C. So four beats per bar, nothing crazy going on. But what we've got here with the E minor, that's our first chord. But with the, what happens with the next chord, which is really, really interesting, is the G major, instead of starting on beat one of bar two, which is very, very common, if we look, follow the chart below my hands, we've got G major, which is starting on that chord change and the accent for that chord change take place on beat four of bar one. So if I was to count out the first two bars of this chord progression, it would sound like, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's the moving of this G major, just one beat, which adds that whole level of syncopation and groove to those two bars. So one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Okay, so moving on, we've got our D major voicing here, which follows the exact same rhythmic displacement idea. So D major for three beats. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So same again. D major, two, three, on beat four we change to C, one, oh, four, one, two, three, four. So looking at this chord progression, how it all fits together now, so you'll be able to see exactly, I'll count it out so you can see exactly where those accents have been moved to beat four, and then you'll be able to listen to the feel and see how effective it is. 
So one, two, three, four, 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 last time, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it's only a very, very subtle adjustment going, moving the chord change one beat. But you can hear how effective it is in creating that bit of feel and that bit of groove, which you just wouldn't get. I'll go back and play the progression a little bit quicker. So but I'll do it so it's 4-4 four, four with really, really traditional accents and chord changes. And then I'll add the syncopation. <clears throat> two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Here comes the change guys. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So at the end of the day, theoretically what's going on is only a really subtle manipulation of where the chords act the chord accents actually fall but when you're listening to the two examples side by side you can hear the massive difference that it makes it just completely redefines the feel when you move that chord accent from beat one of the bar and just drop it on beat four so this is really really useful and i think ed sheeran has used this technique perfectly in creating really good feel and really good groove at those slower tempos in the two songs i see fire and thinking out aloud. <clears throat> also, if you're paying attention there, we're gonna look at a quick little exercise and how you can create a cool little feel how I was hitting my hand on beat three on the guitar. So what I was doing there is I was actually mimicking as if a drummer was playing. So when you're playing solo guitar, you're trying to mimic what a band would play and where the accents would fall. For example, on this one, we've got our drum beat. So Okay, so excuse the, the poor beatboxing there, but that's to illustrate the point of you, you're really imitating a snare or a drum beat there, okay? So let's jump in on the fretboard. I'm going to show you guys how to execute that little idea using a bit of percussion in amongst your chord progressions, and then you two can start running off with it and really playing around with this idea in your own songs and in your arrangements. All right, guys, so what we're going to do really, really simply is E minor. That's our first chord. So we're going to go one, two, three. So we're just going to hit our hand on the strings, strum on beat one, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Just like that, one, two, three. So we go one, two, three, four. Okay, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Four and so that's three, four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and one more time for you guys. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and and then we just transfer that same strumming pattern to the next two chords. So that would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and. All right, so putting the whole thing together. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and. 
cool. So just with that exercise, if this is something which is a little bit tricky for you, break the exercise down into little manageable compartments. So what I, just like I introduced it there, so maybe just work on one bar at a time where you're going one, two, three, four, okay? Get that really comfortable. And then once you're comfortable with that, don't try and rush ahead, get it good. Because rushing ahead, you're only cheating yourself out of developing the skills, okay? So get it really comfortable, get it good, and then add the next little bit and just keep following that process. And if you do that, you guys will get the results, develop the skills, and be able to play music exactly how you want to play it. So cool, that's some awesome stuff for you guys to start taking home and practicing, developing those ideas, incorporating them into your own songs, your own arrangements, or even if that was just beneficial for you guys who want to learn a little bit more about theory. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, hit those subscribe, like, and share buttons below the video. Also, you can support the channel and the content we create by hitting the PayPal donate button all below the video. Also, just like Sam today, if you guys want to send an email, any requests, anything you're curious about, challenges, send them in. I'm happy to look at those in due course and they could potentially be featured in an online tutorial just like today. Also, if you want to get my help personally, uh, the best way to do that is to book an online consultation. You can also follow the links below that have all the information for that. So practice hard, guys. Take your time, develop these skills, and really enjoy implementing them into your own playing. And I will look forward to catching up with you in the next video.